Good morning, good morning, and thank you, Yazif. That was a beautiful reading, and thank all the worship leaders. Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful music. It is my pleasure to be here with you this morning. Won't you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to thee, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Today's psalm reminds us, as theologian Walter Brueggemann said, when God is not honored, creaturely life disintegrates and denigrates. The end result is a life filled with terror. When we are foolish enough to believe that nothing is sacred, that there is nothing holy, that there is no God, the result is a life of fear and emptiness. That's what the psalmist was talking about. And when I was a student at Illinois State University, I was in the interdenominational choir and there was a popular gospel song based on this psalm. The fool said in his heart, there is no God, there is no God, there is no God. But then the song like our New Testament reading assures us of God's presence and power. The song goes on to say, God is a spirit. We worship him in spirit and truth. Just like the wind that keeps blowing, we cannot see it, but we feel it move. There is a God. There is a God, almighty God. Today, our gospel reading assures us that life rooted in love and sacred spirit can take us to places we dare not even dream. A life rooted in love can provide life without being anxious or fearful, a life that leads us to places of restoration. So once again, we return to Paul's words where he probably wrote to the Ephesians from a prison cell, perhaps with no more than a single beam of light penetrating a thick brick wall into his cell. All is dark, and Paul's condition was desolate and ripe with conditions that would cause most people to give up and to be filled with despair. But instead, what's so interesting, he writes in this predicament, his response is not, oh, woe is me. But in this moment, he points us towards something sacred beyond ourselves. Again, let us hear this text from the Living Bible Translation. When I think about the wisdom and scope of God's plan, I fall down on my knees and pray to the Father of all the great family of God, some of them already in heaven and some right down here on earth, that out of God's glorious, unlimited resources will give you the mighty inner strengthening of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in him. May your roots go deep down into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you be able to feel and understand, as all God's children should, how long how wide, how deep, and how high this love really is. And to experience this love for yourselves, though it is so great that you will never see the end of it or fully know or understand it. And so at least, at last, you will be filled up with God himself. End of the reading. Now, early in this same text, Paul had just been going over with the Ephesians the wonderful fact that the gospel of Jesus Christ had been opened not just to the Jewish people from whose history salvation had come, but also to the Gentiles, which was shorthand for everyone on earth. Paul is still writing to a people 
divided along lines of ethnicity and history, Paul is still writing to a people so used to the corrupt people of the world having their way. Paul is still writing to a people who might be wondering if any of this even matters at all. Paul is still writing for those who might be wondering, is there any merit in doing good? He's writing for those who wonder about the existence of the sacred. And Paul answers by asserting the certainty of his faith, by telling the Ephesian how he prays for them, and even knowing their plight. He doesn't pray for their victory over their enemies, and he does not even pray that they will be healthy and safe. He does not pray that they be successful or wealthy. He doesn't even pray that they will find a way to stand up to the political foes in the Roman Empire. He doesn't pray that they might experience their best life now. No, he simply prays for strength in the spirit to bring Christ more fully into their hearts. And then he prays that they might receive power, but not political power. No, he prays that they may receive power to grasp something hard to grasp. He prays that they receive the power to understand how wide and how long, how high and how deep is the love of Christ. He prays believing that by knowing that they are a part of God's design, by knowing they are loved, by knowing that they are connected to every other living thing, by knowing who holds the future, he prays believing by knowing that the universe bends towards justice and light. He knows that if people can embrace this truth, their empty spaces will be filled their courage will be restored, their resolve will be deepened. And so it is with us. In 1952, a British scripture scholar and translator, J.B. Phillips, wrote a book with the provocative title, Your God is Too Small. He said, the trouble with many people today is that they have not, a found, they have not found a God big enough for their modern needs. I think he was right. If Phillips were writing today, he might title the book, Your God is Too Small and Too Distant. I believe he would say the challenge for many people today is finding a God who is big enough to embrace the world and close enough to feel their inner emptiness. So this morning, I have come to tell you, I believe that too many of us do have a God that is too small. A God that is bound by our traditions. A God that is too small, a God that is wrapped up in our flag. A God that is too small, a God that looks like us and likes what we like. A God that is too small, a God preoccupied with your wealth rather than peace and justice, a God that is too small, a God that is in our image. A small God, the small God that we fashioned is narrow and tame and does nothing surprising or amazing anymore and is boxed in by our preconceptions. This, this small God is stingy with mercy and only has enough love for people like us, our kind of people, our nation, our tribe, our family, our social class, even our denomination. And this, this small God of our own making is predictable, safe, and yes, I'm going to say it, boring. And sadly, our faith in so many places has become 
safe, predictable, and boring. But here, Paul tries to shift our gaze, inviting us to realize how long, how wide, how deep, and how high this love God offers really is. Because we need our experience, our idea of the holy to be up close and personal. A small, predictable, distant God leaves us feeling overwhelmed by change and threatened by emptiness. A distant God way off can't do anything about the emptiness that threatens us. That's the awesome thing about our tradition, about the word becoming flesh. Through Christ, God was no longer distant, but right here on earth being subject to all the temptation and grief and hunger and anger and loneliness and judgment and persecution and abandonment that we face, but still being firmly connected to the holy at the same time. My friends, we all live through seasons which demand more than we can possibly deliver. Work grinds on, but our energy leaves us. Needs pile up, but we're at risk of caving in. Opportunities multiply, but, but we feel divided. Our schedule is jammed full, but our hearts are alarmingly empty. Maybe that's how you might feel right now. You're way over your emotional limits. You're at risk of losing yourself. You might feel most days it's just enough to get out of bed, to put on your responsibility, our mask of habit, and our armor of protection, and just do what you have to do. And you might feel emptied out this morning. And so often we will feel that emptiness with, with noise, always having the, the TV on or, or food, eating, even though we're not really hungry. Finding ways to numb ourselves with whatever provides just a little temporary relief and help you to get through and do it again the next day. Well, a small distant God can't help you with that. But a God, a big God, so big and so deep and so wide that has lived our humanity alongside us oh, can do that. Only a God that is so multidimensional that we can literally take this God, this experience, this concept of the holy inside of our minds, take it inside of our spirits, and as we will do today with communion, literally take it inside of our very bodies. That can pull us through. And thankfully, as prayer, Paul's prayer to the Ephesians, Christians reminds us, we don't have a small and distant God. We don't have a limiting God. We don't have a boring God. We don't have a predictable God. We have a sacred presence that is as close to us as our own breath. Through today's text, we are encouraged to reach out to the Holy One, what Bishop Shelby Spawn called the ground of all being. And we are assured that our, our longing, our emptiness, will be filled with unlimited resources that will give you the mighty inter, inner strengthening of the Holy Spirit. You know that that inner strength, that trouble don't last always. You know that inner strength to know that faith, real faith, is believing in spite of the evidence and then watching the evidence change. The inner strength to know that in Christ even death doesn't have the last word. It gives us the assurance to know 
that there is a power in the universe greater than governments. There was a power in the universe greater than war machines. There is a power in the universe greater than lies wrapped in shiny false hope. So friends, my prayer for you today is that according to the riches of God's glory, God may grant that your inner strength become even stronger with that power, a power so big and so intimate that you walk through this life bursting with miracle-making possibility. So much as Paul says that you are filled up with God itself, feeling connected to every living being and being moved with compassion when souls suffer. I close with these words of scripture. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you be able to feel and understand now Glory be to God, who by God's mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>